The story that I have for you today is one that took place decades ago when I was 14 years old, and some of it happened while I was finishing up my freshman year of high school, and then the rest is in the summer in between freshman and sophomore years. I, I would turn 15 later on that summer, uh, you know, in, in late August, so most of this is happening when I'm, you know, 14 years old. And the story goes back, there's a lot of different moving parts to it. So it goes back a little bit before I actually got mono in order to understand how this ended up happening. And mono is mononucleosis. It's, it's a uh, viral disease that you can get. It's often called the kissing disease. And I think that's actually how I ended up getting it, but you can get it in other ways as well. And then it's one of these things that stays in your system and, you know, it can, it can lead to problems later on. I don't think it has for me. So we got to back this up to spring break of my um, freshman year. So we'd be talking about early 1985, or actually not really that early. We're talking about April, right? Because spring break coincided more or less with the Easter holiday. And so my mom and sister and my mom's boyfriend, Fran, um, we went down to Panama City Beach, Florida, and we like rented a bungalow and, you know, we'd go out to the beach each day. And my mom was in an organization called Parents Without Partners. And I think by that time she was also in the Vagabond Ski Club. And these were organizations that were for divorcees or widows and widowers, people who had kids and wanted to get together with other people who had kids, I guess, you know, in part to, for support and commiseration, but also because then the kids could go do stuff and then the adults could enjoy themselves and they could all relate to each other. So we went down with several other families on this trip and, and some of them I already knew from Parents Without Partners. And then there was another family that was, was new to me and they, I was 14 years old. They had a 17 year old senior girl who, and they lived in, in Milwaukee, um, who was, you know, quite attractive and, and, uh, uh, found me interesting and I found her interesting. I was uh, very much into heavy metal at the time, so I was constantly walking around with this boombox. I was like maybe, you know, I was as tall as I am and was starting to grow my hair long and I was probably maybe 100, 145 pounds. I think I'd gained a little bit of weight because of uh, weightlifting and stuff like that. Anyway, this, this girl, Lori, um, she was, you know, hitting on me and, you know, we flirted back and forth and we'd go and take walks and go out, you know, and swim at night and stuff like that. So we're starting to get closer. And of course, you know, it, it's kind of an, a, in, in some ways it's like a rock and roll fantasy, right? So long story short, towards the end of the, uh, the week that we were spending down there, had my first kiss, lost my virginity, uh, all like out on the beach at night uh, with, you know, Rat and Motley Crue playing on my boom box and the, the ocean and et cetera, et cetera, right? So, so it was kind of a, uh, you know, an interesting uh, set of experiences. And then I saw her two more times after that, you know, we go back and I'm not sure what exactly was going on, but we lived out in the sticks in, in the hills of Delafield between Wales and Delafield, Wisconsin. And as I said, she lived in Milwaukee. So she, you know, she'd like call me up and stuff like that. And she came out with her mom and maybe her, her sister, who was about my sister's age. And, uh, you know, we took a walk, made out, all that sort of stuff. Um, got interrupted by my, my grandpa who was kind of nosy and then she went on her, her way and then she'd like call me up and she wanted me to go on dates with her and my mom was not big on this idea but eventually uh, relented and so um, I was at you know my mom's boyfriend Fran's place in, in Elm Grove um, and was kind of halfway in between. So Lori came out, picked me up. We uh, actually went to a bar in Milwaukee where we were shooting pool and, you know, drinking slow gin fizzes and other stuff like that. Um, 
when I was only 14, she was 17. So obviously, you know, underage drinking and stuff like that. And then, you know, we drove around a bit, made out in her car some more. And, um, you know, that, that was more or less that. And then, and meanwhile, at the same time, you know, my freshman year, I, well, actually, all three uh, of my, my first three years, I ran track. And I would run the 400 meter, uh, called the 440, right, the 440 yards. And I would run that race, and then I would also run the mile relay, which is four guys um, running with a baton, uh, each of them doing a quarter mile, right, a 440, and then you hand off the baton. So I was stuck doing that race twice every track meet, and I didn't like it much. Um, the 440, you take off at a sprint, and you know by the time that you hit about the halfway point, lactic acid is starting to build up in your body, and you get, get to the three-quarter point, you hit what's called the bear, where it feels like you know your muscles are clenching, and maybe a bear is tearing your, scratching you down your back or something like that, and then you just got to like push it out. So I had to do that twice every every track meet. And, you know, I tried to do other things, but my coach was like, no, you're a 440 runner. Keep, <laughs> stay in your lane, so to speak. So I'm sick, right? I'm starting to get sick, and it's the very last track meet of the year in uh, late May. Uh, beautiful day, you know, nice and warm and stuff like that. I'm not feeling great, you know, so I do my 440. I don't, I don't think I had a particularly good time, but, you know, when you're sick, you're sick. And then I had to do the mile relay. And the mile relay is the last event of the track meets, at least at the level that I was at. So I do my mile relay. And, you know, after I, I finish um, handing the baton off, I like, you know, run off and like grab a fence because I'm just about passing out and coughing and stuff like that. And my, my mom and, and Fran come by and they're like, Ooh, you don't look good. And I'm like, yeah, I don't feel good, you know? And so I, I, I go home and they got me like some, I don't know, some, uh, of the popsicles that we used to have, these push up popsicles. And, and I'm, you know, laying in bed and, and sweating bullets. And, um, you know, back then we didn't have air conditioning. There's only one family on our entire street that had air conditioning and it's already getting kind of warm. And, you know, I'm, I'm feeling really, really rough. And so the next day, my mom is like, we're going to the doctor. We got to see what's, what's going on with you. And so I go in and the doctor's like feeling my lymph nodes and, and all of that. And the doctor's like, well, this looks like mono, uh, mononucleosis. And so you need to have a lot of bed rest. And here's something I'm going to tell you, you know, young feller, you're going to start feeling better pretty soon, but you had better stay in bed. Even if you start feeling better, I don't want you to do any exercise at all. You know, and I was like, well, can I like get the mail or get the paper, walk down the driveway? He's like, you know, for the first part, I don't even want you to do that, let alone work out. He, he like knew that I was eager to get back to working out. And he's like, you had better not lift a single thing. Not weights, not boxes, nothing for until I see you next time, because I'm going to give you another test, you know, another blood test. And we're going to see whether or not, you know, you've basically got the virus taken care of. Uh, and if you've screwed around and not followed my instructions, it's going to show. So what do you think I did? Well, before I do that, we'll, we'll uh, tell you a few other things. So I started getting better, you know, within a few days and then I'm, you know, I'm looking at my weights that I've got uh, in the basement and I'm like, you know, I know the doctor said I'm not supposed to lift weights, but it really couldn't hurt that much, could it? And so, so I started working out again. And, uh, I, you know, of course I did it secretly because my mom, you know, would have gotten mad at me if she'd, if she'd known. And sure enough, we go back to the doctor. I'm feeling great. And the doctor, you know, is like, well... Your blood test is pretty clear. Uh, you screwed around, and now you're going to have to spend the whole summer resting so you can get over this. And I was like, what? And he's like, yep, no exercise for you. Uh, maybe, maybe by the end of the summer, but I want you to spend as much time as possible in bed and... Um, 
You can't do any sort of, you know, exercise or anything like that. Um, you can walk and get the mail, but that's about it. And I was like, oh, this sucks. And now, fortunately, I was a big reader, right? So I could go to the library and get books. And I did spend a lot of time reading. My mom, interestingly enough, decided that since I was going to spend the summer, you know, largely in bed, that it was time to replace my bed with a waterbed. And if you don't know what a waterbed is, it's, you know, there's there's a bed frame and then there's like a mattress, but the mattress is actually essentially like a big balloon filled with water with kind of thick edges. Or, yeah, not edges, uh, but, but a shell, right? And you fill it up with water and then you can heat it and you lay in it and it like makes waves and stuff like that. And the, I think the idea back then was it was supposed to be like supportive for your body it was a big thing in the 70s and the 80s. And so I'm stuck now, you know, spending the summer, windows open. I can hear all the other kids playing outside. I can walk outside and see them and hang out with them to some degree. Of course, they don't want to hang out that much because they want to go do things, right? So I'm reading, you know, and taking it easy and all that sort of stuff. Um, tried, of course, calling Lori. Uh, but by that time, you know, I was getting the brush off because now she's going out with college guys, right? <laughs> because she's, she's moving on up. I, you know, I was, I was just a fling for her. And of course I get my heart broken about that and then move on. Uh, I also missed this really cool trip that I was supposed to go on with, um, other, other, you know, people in, in my grade, uh, where we'd go up to the boundary waters in um you know on the on the border of uh um minnesota and and canada and camp out for like a week you know portage with canoes and cool stuff like that which i did end up doing the next summer but uh it had to be postponed because i couldn't go anywhere couldn't really do anything and you know it was it was a long long grind right like i said i did get a lot of reading done but i i don't think i actually like studied anything extensively i didn't apply myself or anything like that i did finish up my school year uh because the track meet was not at the very end i think we had like another week of classes and then week of final exams <clears throat> so i had to do all of that stuff from home. And this is, you know, long before the internet or anything like that. There's nothing online. My mom had to physically go to the school, get the homework assignments, get my books, get all the stuff, bring it back to me. I had to complete it in my room and then she had to take it back to, to my, my high school and, and hand in all the stuff. But all of that went without any sort of hitch. And I just remember, you know, what a long, frustrating summer that was and if you know if i'd listened to the doctor's warnings instructions who knows maybe i would have kicked the mono early and uh had the rest of the summer to do the typical things that teenagers do in the summer which for me was you know skateboarding and um you know going on on camping trips uh which often involved you know um you know, various uh, misbehavior and drinking and things like that with my, my uh, friends and uh, what else, you know, doing other, other uh, things, riding bikes, taking hikes, you know, spending a lot of time outside. And so, you know, that was all basically precluded because I thought that I was smarter than the doctor. Turns out I wasn't. And so, you know, it's kind of an interesting story beginning with, um, you know, uh, kind of coming of age ritual, you could call it, uh, leading into uh, getting sick and then spending the entire summer recovering from it. And, you know, I still have uh, the virus in my system, I'm sure. You know, for a long time, anytime I would get sick, my lymph nodes would would swell up. The doctor said they'd never quite go back to normal after after having it. But I don't think it's been you know, creating any any serious problems for me. But it, it's you know it's tough to tell, isn't it? So that's my story about the summer that I got mono. <laughs>